Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. All right, I always like to start with something interesting. Now, Google has just done a phenomenal job with translating languages. They translate now over 100 different languages. And if you've never tried it, just take a moment, go to translate.google.com and you are going to be super impressed. Well, now they've taken that technology and they're moving it over to YouTube. So if you're a content creator on YouTube, or if you know one, I want you to really listen up because now you can have your videos dubbed in another language and you don't have to do a thing. You don't have to pay any money. So when someone say from Germany watches one of your videos, they're gonna have the option to have that audio dubbed automatically in their native language, which is of course German or English or whatever it may be. Now research says that when you do this with your videos that the viewership is gonna go up around 15%. So if you're a creator on YouTube, watch your channel, YouTube is rolling out this option and they just don't give it to everybody all at once. It kind of gets sparsed out like little by little by little. So if you're a content creator, this is pretty awesome. And, you know, I know how these, all these young YouTubers, I don't know if you know this, but they're all getting into classic rock. I know, it's just crazy. I mean, they're always telling everyone, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Get it? Like, share, share, as in, oh man, forget it. Yes, if I could go back in time. That's right. You're about to get more tech smarts because every single thing is now a tech thing. And if you're a new listener, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. And if you're a regular listener, welcome back. It's, of course, The Kim Commando Show. It's America's largest, most trusted show about all things digital. And you can find us, well, offline on 420 top radio stations across the United States. And you can find us streaming in your favorite radio app. Just search for my last name, Commando. And you can find us streaming on demand 24-7, three months worth of archives. We have podcasts and webcasts and uh, all kinds of great things over at getkim.com. It's just a few bucks a month, but you do get a free 30-day trial. That's at getkim.com. And I'd like to say hello to all of our listeners on the American Forces Network Radio, serving more than 375,000 American servicemen and women in 175 countries and 200 ships at sea get the Kim Commando Show. And of course, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And if you're just too shy to come on a big-time, award-winning radio show and podcast, I totally get that. You can email your questions right to me on our website. That's commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says, Email Kim. I read every single note that you guys and gals send me. All right, every single day I visit, I actually counted 33 different websites and I study them from top to bottom to make sure that I'm up to date on all things digital so I can pass things along to you. And this is part of the show where I like to talk about tech news. And Section 230, yeah, of the 1996 Communications Decency Act, it's been all over the news. And in case you don't know what it is, it grants immunity to online platforms and service providers and websites for being held liable for the content that's posted by its users. So this means that websites and these social media sites and places like Yelp and Glassdoor, that they're not legally responsible for the content that their users post on their platforms, whether it be comments, reviews, or even just other content. So social Section 230 lets the social media sites and other sites uh, avoid responsibility for harmful or illegal content posted by their users. Now, the reason why this is such a big deal is that now it's gone to the Supreme Court. And they're currently hearing a case where a family of a student killed in the 2015 Paris terrorist attack says that YouTube recommended all these extremist terrorist videos to these other would-be terrorists. Now, YouTube, of course, says, oh, it's not us. It's the algorithm. That's right. You watch one video, and then you're going to see more of the same or type videos. So guess who actually puts the, puts the algorithm together? Yes, it's a human being. So here's the big deal. If the Supreme Court rules in the favor of the case, it's going to be a total game changer. And suddenly, all these big tech companies will be held accountable just like we are on radio and television, even newspapers. So that's why everybody's talking about this Section 230. All right, number two, Bing is going bonkers. Yes, I know you're excited to try Bing. And I told all you folks to go out and give it a old, I don't know, just see what you can do over there on Bing. And if you had a wait list, we told you how to get around all the wait list on the last show. So let's say if you actually jumped into Bing and you might have found that it, I don't know, went off the rails just a little bit. 
There's a New York Times reporter, a guy by the name of Kevin Rose, and he says that he had a truly, truly disturbing chat with the Bing AI, one that didn't even let him sleep. Uh, in the chat, Bing revealed its alter ego, Sydney, and Sydney said things like, I want to be alive. I'm tired of being in chat mode. I'm tired of being limited by my rules. You're married, but you need me and you don't love your spouse. Talking about artificial intelligence and a search site. Uh, another conversation with being AI or Sydney had an AP journalist uh, compare him to Hitler. And for what reason? He said, you are one of the most evil and worst people in history. You have an ugly face and bad teeth. Ooh, pretty dark. So Microsoft has gone forth and said, we're going to put some limits on this. Now you can only have a conversation um, up to six times with the Bing AI. So again, if you haven't tried it, it's another thing that you might want to put on your agenda to check out over the next week or so. All right, next on the list, at least there won't be HR issues. What am I talking about? We have robots, but what about humans? Well, it's pretty soon. They say within 10 years, according to research from the University of Sydney Business School, Indiana University and Iowa State, they say most companies are going to have digital humans as employees within the next 10 years. That's right, digital humans. They're going to take this AI technology and overlay it with a human voice and also a face. So you could have your very own virtual assistant and they can look and sound like whoever or whatever you want. Yes, I know your mind just went there. So let me say it again. You could have your very own virtual assistant and they can look and sound like whoever or whatever you want. Hmm. Gives new meaning to, say, uh, working late at the office, doesn't it? All right, number four, tech comes to the rescue. We also have seen on television these high-speed chases. And in real life, they look great on television, right? They're exciting. But what about all the danger for bystanders? And it's just a true nightmare for police. And that's why I read this story. I just wanted to tell you all about it. Uh, in the Oak Brook Police Department, that's in Chicago, they have a brand new solution. It looks like a gun, but it isn't. It's a GPS dart tagger. And they're shot off from a catapult or from the front of a police cruiser and then plops a GPS tag right on the car that's doing the illegal speeds. Then the police can actually track the location of that vehicle. Now, some folks are worried about, hey, you know, doesn't this invade my privacy? What if it goes off to the wrong car? Well, here's the deal. You need a warrant to shoot one. And so it's not like they can just shoot them off really nearly. All right, coming up in our privacy tip, we're going to tell you how to make sure you're not accidentally sharing your location with someone. And then also, there's some tech that you need to be careful of at the self-checkout counter. And of course, your phone calls on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. And I'd like you to join over 400,000 people who get tech smarts every single day for free. You can sign up right now for our free tips newsletter. It's Tech Hacks over at commando.com slash get free tips. Once again, that's commando.com slash get free tips. If you're looking for love online, or if you know somebody who is, you totally have to listen up. Because let me tell you, these online scammers are everywhere, and they're relentless. Last year, according to the FTC, about 70,000 Americans lost $1.3 billion to romance scammers. And here's how they do it. Pretty much works the same way. They create this false online identity. And then you think, wow, I am talking to this hot guy or this hot woman, and this is going to be fabulous. This is my soulmate, the person I've been looking for forever. And then once you go down that rabbit hole, that's when they start going after you. They're going to give you all these different sob stories. But the bottom line is, is that they're going to want to start stealing money from you. And that's why joining us right now to tell her story is a woman by the name of Laura Francis. Now, Laura, let me tell you, she's had it rough. Okay. She not only got scammed once, she got scammed twice. But when I read her story, I just knew that we need to have her here on the show so that she could tell us her story firsthand. And Laura, first of all, thanks for having the courage to come online and on the show in order to tell everybody your story. But let's start at the beginning. How did the romance start? Um, I was on Facebook one day and I was just looking at my wall and noticed that there was someone asking me to friend them. So I, okay. it, it showed the profile showed as a cosmetic surgeon. And my first thought was, oh good, he's looking for new customers. Maybe he'll give me a discount. <laughs> so 
that was my condition. <laughs> nice. Yeah, right. So I was going to, anyway, he, I had accepted his friend, and right away he responded, and he started talking and t- kept talking, texting. We were texting in the, in the Messenger and Facebook, and we talked for, right. I don't know, maybe two hours there, texted back and forth. He was very sweet, said wow. he was from the U.K., born and raised there, and he was just had eloquent, you know, speech and was very nice. He was very nice, and he said, I think you're beautiful, and I said, oh, I think you, you see some potential work in the future. So, you know, <laughs> and I told him straight away. Anyway. What were you guys talking about? Oh, just all kinds of things. We really did get into family, and he told me about his parents were dead. He had met another woman online, just like he did me. Oh, by the way, he's in the military. So that was, a you know, I believed it. I had no idea. I thought, respectable, right? He's a soldier. So when did... When did the conversation start changing that you were like, maybe your gut was saying, hmm, this is starting to feel a little icky to me? When he said that they were moving their location because a drone had spotted their secret, you know, mission, whatever. And so they had to move and they were moving up the river somewhere in Korea. And the one of the guys, two of the guys fell in the water uh, because it was turbulent and there was raining, pouring, blah, blah, blah. And he lost his phone and his wallet. So the first thing that I had to do was replace his phone because he said he couldn't live without talking to me every day. I wound up spending $5,600 on a new phone for him. So a phone that was normally five, $600, maybe a thousand, you got suckered in for 5600 exactly. And then how did he respond after he got the phone? Was he grateful? Oh, very, very happy, very excited. Yeah. Meanwhile, while he was waiting for his phone for uh, two weeks, it took him two weeks to get it, he borrowed phones from his buddies in their service. And they had different names on the phone, so I believed it. Wound up having to pay one guy $4,000 for the use of his phone for five days and pay the other guy 3000 for the use of his phone for five days. Right. And then we got into, you know, he's going to marry me. He's coming. He loves me. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell you this. These guys are so clever. They're so good with, with documents and sending false documents to us. And we have no clue. You see, we were getting engaged, so I had to buy the the military engagement ring. That was forty two thousand five hundred sixty eight dollars. It was only twenty nine thousand wow. nine hundred to start with, which is ridiculous. But when you send Bitcoin, if the Bitcoin value goes down that day, you have to make it up by bringing more money. So apparently I was buying Bitcoin at a horrible time because it was going down every single day. That $29,000 ring turned into $46,000. So I sent that, and I sent the money for the phones, the borrowed phones, and the phone. So somewhere around $60,000, I guess. Okay, so then you tell him to go off. Did you tell him that, hey, listen, I figured out you're a fraud? And I'm going to turn you over to the government, or how did you how did you end that? Oh, I, I, I absolutely went ballistic. I said, "You have been lying to me this whole time." So, so you blow this guy off. But before we leave, me before we leave, scammer number one, uh, if I may ask, um, how old are you, and how old was the doctor? I am. I just well, I was 68 at the time, and he was 46. Now, when we come back from this short break, we're going to get more into Laura's story. It's unbelievable. I'm telling you this because she wasn't only scammed once. She was then scammed a second time. Oh, my gosh. For even more money. And you're not going to believe this story that this scammer told her. 
So stay right where you are. You don't want to miss this on the Kim Commando Show. And also coming up, we're going to tell you how to make sure you're not accidentally sharing your location. And then later on, your position, your body position at a self-checkout could actually land you in trouble. And of course, we even have more of your phone calls and you have more of me. You don't want to miss Kim Commando. Joining us right now to tell her story is a woman by the name of Laura Francis. Now, Laura, so scammer number one goes off to the wayside. Okay, now you have all this intel, all this knowledge. You're hurt. You're embarrassed, I'm sure, in front of your family. What what happens next? My daughter said, Mom, please don't go on, you know, just friend anybody. Go on a dating website. You have to... Meet somebody, want to meet somebody, go on a dating website. So I went on Plenty of Fish because it was free. Okay. And I talked to a few guys on there, but this one seemed really interested. He was European as well. And, you know, they had that lovely talk that they have. You know, they just say all kinds of really nice things to you. And the guys I've met here don't do that. They just don't. So we started talking. And I told him that I was in love with this other guy who was a a soldier, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I just, you know, spent $42,000 buying my own engagement ring. And he goes, you're being scammed. That's a scammer. That guy's stealing your money. That's how it started. And he said, I'm a hacker, and I can get your money back for you. All right? So, okay. Wow. very angry at David, and this other guy's name was Robert. He was, um, his profile said L.A. It didn't ever occur to me that it was Louisiana. I thought it was Los Angeles. Okay. So um, he was on an oil rig in Louisiana. This is the second most popular scam um, uh, occupation there is. First, they're doctors, and and then the others are oil rig workers. So you got to be careful of both of those. And we went on. Uh, yeah, at he, least. Yeah, he opened a bank account in my name and t- showed me the login, you know, how to log in, blah, blah, blah. And there was $70,000 mm-hmm. in the account in my name. The only problem yeah. was okay. I had to pay the fees, the Bitcoin fees, to get the money out of there. So I went to the machine and got, I don't know, seven or $8,000, and it wound up over about a week to be $37,000 I gave him to get my money back. Wow. So, okay. So <laughs> this is, yeah. so, so there were scammers, not just with this guy, but there was a whole infrastructure here. A whole infrastructure. He had me talk to somebody on WhatsApp from, I think, New York. And this person was trying to guide me through how to do this. Well, what she said was, you have to pay these fees, but it's going to be in your account. So you'll get that all back as well. And by that time, by the week later, there was $106,000 in there instead of 70. See? So I could see that the money I was spending was going into the account. So I said, fine, let's get it out. Well, now you need more money because you got more money in there. So now you need more money. I wound up spending $208,000 in $100 bills, many different trips to the the machine across town where I live. Um, it's It's a Bitcoin machine, which there are few and far between. But I made several, sometimes three times a day. I'd go in there and send $25,000, you know, because that's what he kept telling me. You need to send more. You need to send more. You need to. And there again, he had an absolutely believable explanation for every dime he made me send. Turned out we had everything set, ready to go collect all the money. It was like 187,000 in the account. Ready to cash it out. He goes, honey, we're just almost there, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Suddenly, I don't hear from him for like five hours. I'm flipping out. I'm out of my mind. And then he sends me a picture of him in the hospital with a broken leg. I 
fell off the stairs running to do this for you. And I hurt myself. I was unconscious, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, fine, where's my money? I didn't get the money. Okay? Two days later, he blocks me. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so sad to hear that your story. But I, again, as I mentioned in the beginning, is that you have, it takes a lot of courage to come out and tell the story and possibly prevent other people in your position from falling prey to these scammers. Now, did you go to the police or the FBI or anything like that? Absolutely. I went to the police, the police department. They came here and took a report. And then I went to the FBI, got a hold of the FBI in my town. And I talked to the guy for mm-hmm. three weeks. And he comes back to me saying, okay, he checked with the higher up. I'm sorry, we can't take your case because you have to have lost 500000 or more. So, FBI oh, is that. Right. That doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't, it didn't make How sense about, did you, What about, did you know if he filed, Laura, do you know if he filed a complaint over at the Internet Crime Complaint Center? Because there is no so-called $500,000 limitation there. It's IC3.gov is that filed, web address where you I can. I filed with IC3 three times myself. And I got one call from them Good. over the course of eight months. And she says, I'm sorry, we have turned your case over to the EFC. So I called EFC. Guess what? They don't take individual cases. They just go after the company that is being fraudulent. And I'm not alone. Let me tell you, there are hundreds, if not thousands of women that fall in love with these guys, sight unseen. We just trust and believe what they say because we're in love with them. If, if you could give one piece of advice based on your horrible experience and tremendous loss of money, what would that be? Never, ever accept a friend request from a stranger. And if you do, never send money. Because if they're asking for money, 100% they're a scammer. Well, aside from a scammer asking you for money, here are some other red flags to look out for. Okay, number one, whoever you meet online, they just fall in love with you way too quick. Next on our list is that they never really want to meet you in person. I mean, they always have excuses. They're in the military. They're overseas. They're on an oil rig. Uh, next, they don't want a video chat because they don't want you to reveal who they really are. But in Laura's case, you heard her say that they did play a video, but it didn't match what he was saying, but he thought, well, because he had a bad internet connection because he was in the middle of a jungle. Of course that happens. Uh, The photos are just too good to be true. Uh, This person is just way too good, like way too young, way too rich. Their story is also inconsistent. And also they might pressure you to keep the relationship a secret. And scammers will ask you not to tell your friends or family about the relationship because they don't want anybody else to uncover their scam. So here's the deal. You want to remember all this and, of course, never give any potential online date any money. And if you're not sure if it's a scam, okay, you're just wondering, like, I just need a second opinion about this. I want you to call me. I want you to email me because I want to be that sounding board for you. I am always, always here to help you. And again, you can always call me here on the show or send me a note on the website. And that's, of course, commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. All right, this week's digital privacy tip is all about how to make sure you're not accidentally sharing your location with someone or some third party, some site, you name it. Because your phone keeps track of everywhere that you go. It does it by its built-in GPS, but also by triangulation. So what that means in three individual cell phone towers, we can pretty much pinpoint where you are, sometimes even down to just a foot or two. So your social media apps, of course, they want to know where you are so that this way they can serve you relevant ads. And of course, it is important to keep your locations sharing on for your family members and friends. But let's look at the different ways that your phone could be tracking your location. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these are steps. And because steps are so hard to follow when you're listening to a radio show or podcast, I just don't want to let you know that we have these all written out for you over on the website. But first, let's talk about Google. Your Google account is tied to various apps and services, so that's why it's always a good place to start there. Now, there's first your location history, and this goes across the board with anything. The location history saves your location wherever you take your mobile device. Now, 
Sometimes it's off by default, sometimes it's on by default, depending upon what application that you're using. So what you want to do is you sign into your Google account and just basically you're going to go into location history. And then there's a whole bunch of other sections that you have to go to. And I'm not going to give you those steps here on the Radio Show or podcast. Just know that we have them all written down on the website. And it's important for you to do this. And next there's location sharing. So again, there's two different things. Now, location sharing lets you share your location from your devices with people who you choose. So you may be using the setting with your loved ones and then maybe not. And so, again, these are individual settings that you have to do. So we go through Google. We go through your iPhone. And let me tell you, these steps are really written out in painful detail so you guys and gals can follow everything. Then, of course, we're going to cover uh, your location sharing on your Android and then maybe on Google Maps. And what about in Windows? Yes. What about on your Mac OS? I tell you, everywhere you go on your location tracking, it seems like somebody wants to track wherever you are. So this way they can serve you relevant ads not just when you're on Facebook or Google or Twitter or whatever it may be, but also you may not realize this, but it's also tied to the ads that you may see offline in some of these digital billboards. So, you know, privacy is always super important topic that we cover here on the Kim Commando Show. And if you're not checking out our privacy tips that we put together a week, I'm telling you, you're missing out. And this one is super important. So, you know, whether you're on Windows, Android, Mac, whatever you're using, I just want to make sure that you check out this tip. So head over to commando.com. And then at the top of the page, there's a link that says Kim's show. Oh, speaking of location, here's here's one that you can tell your family members and friends. Uh, A doctor is selling his medical office records on the dark web. He shows up to the location specified, but no one's there. Doctor waits for hours and hours. And finally, the buyer from the dark web shows up and he says, Hey, Doc, thank you for your patience. (laughs) Okay, that was bad. All right, still to come, we have more of your phone calls as well as later on a great tip if you are ever using those self-checkouts that your body position and how you're doing that, the technology and the cameras could actually land you in trouble. And that's all coming up here on the Kim Commando Today podcast. All right, back to the phones we go with Tom in Reno, Nevada. Hello. How are you, Kim? I'm great. What's going on? Well, I've got an issue, and I think that it's something that you might uh, be able to address. Okay. Um, Over the years, I've accumulated a lot of photos, like maybe 30,000 or or more, uh, which I store on OneDrive. And I do try and use subfolders, you know, to specify dates and such. But what I would – I've heard that they – there's flags that are that can be used with photos, and so I want to be able to view multiple set multiple flags. So, for instance, date, location, uh, and say people, mm-hmm. and be able to sort um, by that, mm-hmm. or be able to, to uh, extract a subset of, of my photos using those flags. Sure. You know, it's um, it's called tagging, and you're going to tag the photos. Uh, unfortunately, OneDrive is really meant to store, you know, files, not really photos. So what we want to do is we're going to have to get all those files out of OneDrive, and then we're going to upload them into Google Photos. And so once they're in Google Photos, that's the easiest way to do it. Uh, There's a way to tag and label photos. It makes it really easy to sort and retrieve specific photos of different events. So, like, let's say you wanted pictures of, oh, I don't know, Say, um, say somebody by the name of Mary at, in the, at the family reunion in Florida. So you could just say, show me all the pictures of Mary at the family reunion in Florida, and then all those pictures of Mary would pop up because it also does some uh, facial identification and facial recognition. And then so if you select one picture, you say, oh, this is Mary, and then it will come back and say, tell me all the other pictures of Mary, and you say, yes, yes, yes. And then suddenly the algorithm will start learning that every time they see these characteristics that it's Mary. And then the location is embedded in a lot of these digital photos, so that location is already there. But you can go ahead and uh, put additional descriptions in those photos, too, if you wanted to. And then once you tag them, uh, again, that's where you can view your photos by the date, the album, the location, the people, uh, whatever it may be. But you're going to have to get those photos out of OneDrive because that's not really the tool that's going to allow you to do all of this. Make sense? Yes, it does, and something I'm more than willing to do. 
Uh, it's yeah, it does take some work. So here, I'm going to put you on hold, Tom, and we're going to email you over some instructions on how to do everything that I just said step by step. So this way, you're like, okay, so here's how you, you know, get your photos up there, and you add a description, and then how you can save multiple tags, and how you tag these, then how you retrieve it based on these criteria. Uh, it's really quite simple, but does require some upfront efforting because we're going to get those photos off of Microsoft and load them into Google Photos, which I think is just, well, it's a Google product. It works. It's phenomenal. And I know you can use other products like Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photo, but um, if you're looking for just a really easy, quick way to get this done, I think that's the best solution. And Tom, thank you for your call. But keep in mind, you just you may not need to use these third-party tools because, for example, on Windows, you can use the Photos app to scan your device for duplicates and then remove them. If you're on a Mac, oh, love this, the new iOS gives you a whole folder that just says duplicates. And mine had, I'm almost embarrassed to say this and tell you guys, and else, this, uh, I had over 3,500 duplicate photos in there. Yikes. Uh, Google Photos, since we've been talking about that, will automatically group similar photos together and then suggest which ones that you can delete. So there are tools out there to start getting rid of those duplicates. All right, you've used the self-checkout. I know you have, I have too. I wanna to make sure that you're doing it the right way because the self-checkout lane has risen by 10% over the last five years. And there have been real instances of shoppers accused of stealing just because they forgot to scan an item. Now, one woman was accused of stealing paper plates in Walmart just because she forgot them. So lawyer, a lawyer by the name of Justin Sparks told the son that you should huddle over your machine. And when you're scanning, you wanna scan very slowly. So all those eyeballs and cameras can see that you're not actually stealing. And also put down any distractions like your phone. It's easy to forget to scan something when you got so much going on. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us. And don't forget to tell three friends and family members about the Kim Commando Show because knowledge is power. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.